Hello everybody, so today we're doing a JZ modular harness and this one is for an ECU Master Classic ECU. So, let's get into it. Right, so as discussed, this is a JZ modular harness. This one is for use with an ECU Master Classic ECU. This particular application is going into an IS200. Uh, the vehicle is 1JZ GT swapped. Uh, and in this case, obviously, this is going to bring the ECU and fuse box and everything inside the vehicle. Obviously, because all the stuff in the engine bay has now gone away. So we can no longer use the ECU box in the engine bay. <clears throat> obviously, we're going to do our usual testing procedure today. But first of all, as it is a completely brand new harness, we're going to go and take a look at the build process there, see what goes into making these, and then we'll pop back and carry on with the testing. Right, so now you've seen that, what we're going to do is carry on with our testing procedure, but as per usual, the first thing we're going to do is go through the layout of the entire harness, go through everything, where it plugs in, how it connects. And as per usual, we're going to start right here at the ECU side over there. So, this is a customer supplied ECU, it's one that they've had already and they're just having a new harness built for the particular vehicle in question. So we've gone and got new plugs for that to make the new harness on there. But starting from here, you've got your two plugs really nice and easy. One gray, one black. Can't go into each other, so you can't get that mixed up. So that's absolutely fine. Coming out of there, we've then got our branch point over here where everything is going to break out. And first of all, we've got the section that goes over to the fuse box and plugs in over there on the six-pin plug. We've then got the section that pops out over there and plugs into there in the fuse box. And remember, all of these plugs are unique, so you can't plug the wrong one into the wrong slot over there. Coming out here, because it's going to be an IS200, we've got a gearbox harness. So this supplies the signals that the customer is going to supply to the back of the cluster in the IS200 for a speed signal to work. We put on a plug because you don't technically have to have this for the speed signal. You can obviously take it from the ABS ECU, but as we know exactly what gearbox he's got, we've done that just in case he does want to use that. Next up, we've got our two uh, expansion plugs, if you will. So the first one is analog, and in this case, according to our plugs here, it's got analog three and four with a five volts and a sensor ground. So that's your four pin plug over there. We have our expansion plug over there, which has CAM2, Auxiliary 6 and vehicle speed sensor. Now in this case the customer is already using auxiliary 6 to control cooling fans and that's all separate inside the vehicle. Hence the reason why we put them on an expansion plug for him. These are obviously available to use if he so desires and they're extra in there as well. Right, coming along from there, we're just going to come across to here where we've got our grommet. Again, we haven't shrunk it down, so the customer is free to obviously reposition this wherever is going to be most appropriate from there. Then coming up along there, we've got our first breakout at the back over there. Now, obviously, this would be sort of like that, because, again, it's going to go inside and into the firewall over there. But coming out of here, we've got our injector sub harness, so that's going to go straight in there. 
In this case, the customer has got the USCAR or EV614 style injector. So those are all along there. We just make an adaption to our one because obviously our engine has the standard injectors on there. And that's for all the testing purposes that we're going to do. Next up, we've got our ignition sub harness. And in this case, the customer is using Denso ignition coil. So we've got all of them over there. And that has this little earth section that comes out the back over there. And then last but not least, we've got our wideband oxygen sensor. And in this case, he's using a 4.2 wideband sensor. So that comes across there. You can plug that in and then straight into the exhaust manifold over there. All right. So that's that little breakout section over there. It then moves up and comes to the next breakout section over here, which is going to go to the cam sensor, which is directly over there. We also have the earth. Now, in this case, I bolted it down here. But on the 1JZs, obviously, you do have that flat piece on the inlet manifold where you would bolt all the earths to so that's where that's going to end up going on that particular engine now in this case it was originally a 1jz gte but it was a, a jzx 110 or a jzx 171 the customer because of the classic has converted everything over to a jzx 100 style so coming out of there as well we do have our idle speed control valve so that's there for this for just for testing purposes and that's plugged in over there then coming further along, we've got the next breakout over here. And there's obviously there's quite a few sections that are going to come out there. They're going to go back underneath the inlet manifold. So we're going to pop underneath there now and we're going to go through those different sections over there. So first of all, these are all labeled for you guys. So obviously you can't mix anything up over there. Now I'm going to start at the back here because this one we've blanked off because the customer has not opted for this. And that is a fuel pressure sensor. So again, it is all wired up to the ECU, but in this case, the customer doesn't have one. So that's going to be blanked off with the plug as you see over there. We've then got our throttle plug, which pops up. And as I said, he's up, I changed everything over to a JZX100. So we've got the TPS connector of a JZX100 and we've got the intake air temperature sensor. So that's obviously designed to go into the pipe coming up into the uh, actual throttle body itself. So that's that over there. Next up, we have our oil. Now, in this case, you'll notice we're not using a six pin, we're using a four pin plug, and that's because of the sort of lack of inputs of the classic. So we're just allowing an oil pressure sensor as well as an oil pressure switch to be connected. In this case, the switch is gonna be used by the customer who's getting one of these MPX analog converter devices, and that's then gonna transmit over to his IS200 cluster. So we'll be testing that as part of that as well. Next up, we've got our knock. And that's obviously going to the standard knock sensors there and there. Okay, that's all the same on the JZs over there. And then lastly, we've got our section that pops down here. That's going off to the starter solenoid over there. And in this case, we do have the gearbox. The customer's using an R154 gearbox, so we have a separate harness there. Obviously, we've put a plug on here just in case the customer decides to ever change their mind, maybe to BMW gearbox. Obviously, that can then be removed, and then whatever is required for the swap gearbox can be added in. In this case, obviously, it's the standard R154, so we've got our reverse switch over there. We've got our speed sensor over there. And again, like I said, that's all coming through to here. So there's your reverse light in there. And there is your two speed signals for the cluster in there. And then again, if the customer wants to use those, absolutely fine to do so. All right. So that's all the sections that pop down through here. All right. And then we're going to carry on along here. And we're going to have another breakout here at the front of the engine. Now, the first breakout is obviously going to the oil control valve. Now you'll see here, it's a little bit thick over here and that's because we've got the flyback diode installed directly behind the connector over there. So that's got that little section there. The next section coming out of there is your coolant temp. So again, the customer has got two sensors in. One is this one, which is the standard IS200 one, which we're using for the dash. And the other one is a Bosch sensor, which is what we're using for the ECU. And as you know, on a GTE version, those are located here at the front. So that's that section over there. Now then moving further down, it's gonna break out down here at the bottom and then we've got our crank sensor over there. So that plugs straight in over there. In this case, we have put a Mac boost valve allocation in there. If the customer doesn't want to add a Mac boost valve, they most certainly can. And there's the plug for it over there. And then we've got his alternator, which is a VW alternator. So that is his alternator extension over there. You'll see I've got a standard one over there. That's just going to be for testing purposes when we actually run the engine. All right. So that is the complete layout. Really, really nice and simple. Again, everything is labeled for you guys. So if you take a look over here, you'll see it is labeled ISC for idle speed control. Obviously, all of the coils are labeled. So ignition six down there. And then we've got ignition three over there as well. And again, 
cam sensor over there. So again, it is really nice and simple. Everything is labeled. And as per usual, majority of the stuff is switchable in terms of if you ever make changes further down the line. So you can upgrade that over there. Some of the things we've had to cut down just because the uh, ECMOSA Classic doesn't have as many outputs. We also haven't allocated anything in the throttle for drive-by-wire. Again, because the Classic cannot do drive-by-wire on its own. Uh, you can add a module, but obviously that is that is something else entirely. Um, if you are wanting drive-by-wire, obviously I would recommend having the EC Master Black over the Classic, which I normally do anyway because that has CAN and, and all of that as well. All right. Okay, so again, that's the complete layout. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into all of the plugs over there and exactly what the customer is going to need to connect on his side. Obviously, there's a few extra bits for this one because of the fact of the integration into an IS200. All right. So... Starting with the main one, which is your nine pin plug over there. Now do remember, as per usual, we have an entire plug pinout, exactly how everything connects. This is the total ECU pinout of where everything is connected to. So what we'll do is we'll start with the nine pin plug at the top there. Now you're gonna get a red one, which is this thick 14 gauge one over here. That's a permanent 12 volt supply. Again, now in this case, this ECU doesn't actually have a permanent 12 volt supply. So theoretically, you could just put that to an ignition source if you wanted to. It's not really going to make that much of a difference. It's just we standardized the plug here. So that is regarded as a permanent 12 volt supply. Next up is going to be the black with the yellow tracer. And that is your start signal. So again, nice and simple. That just requires a 12 volts. That can either be given by a key barrel or it can be given by a button, whatever you decide. Then we've got number three, which is a yellow with a green tracer, and that is our coolant temp. So in this case, that is going into the box, and that's gonna become visible once we start the engine. Uh, I'll let it heat up so you can actually see the coolant temp come through there, because obviously this is the box going to the customer. He's gonna install this behind his dash, which he can then remove his original IS200 ECU and maintain all the functions of the dash there. Next up is going to be number four, which is a gray 16 gauge wire, and that is for the fuel pump. So this can be taken directly to the fuel pump. Fuel pump is controlled via the ECU. Obviously, the relay is inside here for the fuel pump. So the ECU is controlling the relay, and then this outputs 12 volt to the fuel pump for you guys. Again, if you have bigger pumps or two pumps or whatever else you need, again, this could just be used as a trigger, and you could mount other relays at the back next to the fuel pump and then use this to trigger those relays as well. Then it's still controlled via the ECU. Next up, we've got yellow with a red tracer. So that's that one over there. That is the check engine light. So again, we've got this in here because again, he's gonna be using an IS200 cluster. So we wanna make sure the check engine light, everything works. Again, with a standalone ECU, you obviously set up exactly what errors would create a check engine light. So again, if you go through our videos of setting up inputs and outputs, it'll be in there for you as well. We do have a whole bunch of ECU master. Now this is the classic. Most of the stuff we've done is on the black, but the software is incredibly similar. So don't stress too much about that. You're gonna come across almost the same software and the same things of setting stuff up is gonna be more or less exactly the same. Right, next up we've got number six, which is a solid yellow wire. That's gonna be that one over there. That is TACO. You'll see we've connected it to our cluster over here. So again, same principle. We're gonna be making sure that that does work. And in the case of the customer, he's gonna be using that for the gauge device and obviously to supply his cluster so his rev counter works as it should do. Next up is number seven, and that's gonna be a black with a red tracer. That's this one over here. That is your ignition source to turn everything on. So again, same thing, if, you got, if you're got using a key barrel and you're getting the start signal from there, you'd use the same system for the black with a red tracer wire. That is then gonna give you your ignition feed. Just make sure you don't connect the ACC feed, because obviously as if you do that, the moment you turn the key from on to start, ACC cuts 12 volts. So what you're gonna basically do is every time you go to crank it, you're gonna effectively kill the ECU of power, and then it's not gonna start from there. All right. Number eight is pink and blue. Now this is this is charge light. So this is gonna be this one over here. Okay. Now in this case with the VW alternator from my research that I found, it is actually just the alternator light that is connected in that one. There is only one wire for that one. Obviously we just do the three pin plug because it's a modular design harness. We take it from an existing design. So yeah, we've obviously got his one with just the one wire coming up, but if you ever wanted to go back to a, a JZ alternator, all the wiring is there ready to go for him as well. Next up, we've got number nine, which is yellow with a black tracer. And that's that one over there. Again, that is plugged into there because it's transmitting the oil pressure light, the little red one in the corner there, uh, from the oil pressure switch over there. And that is going over there. Okay. Right, so that is the nine pin plug. So that is all sorted out for you guys. So what we'll do is we'll move over to the extra plugs that you have here. 
Now again, some of these are gonna be used by the customer because like I said on the expansion one, auxiliary six is what he's using for his cooling fan. But obviously if it wasn't him and anybody else, you could use those functions over there. I think he's also using cam two as an input for a button that he has available to him as well. So this one, more than likely two are gonna be used straight away. Vehicle speed sensor, he could obviously take the signal from the cluster into the back of that as well and give the vehicle, give the ECU a vehicle speed sensor if he wanted to. So that is totally possible there. The analog, in this case, we've got analog three and four in this one over here. Obviously, we've already allocated the other ones to things like fuel pressure and oil pressure as well. So those are the two that are in there. Okay, so they are wired up, but obviously in this case, not gonna be set up on the ECU because they don't have those particular sensors on there in, that, in this case. Then again, five volts and signal ground. So again, anytime you have an analog input, uh, you might need a five volt or a signal ground, so we do allocate it in the plug, otherwise obviously you're not gonna be able to use them if you don't have those two wires available to you. All right, so that is pretty much the setup there. We've gone through the layout, we've gone through the plugs. What I'm gonna do now is pop back, or pop off now. We're gonna come back and then we're gonna start doing all the testing of the particular functions on the ECU. So let me do that now, we'll be back in a second. Right, so now we're gonna go into the testing part of it and it's gonna move into two sections. First, we're gonna be testing with just the ignition on, so there'll be a couple of things we test there. Second part is gonna be with the engine actually running. Now, as you can clearly see, I haven't got the intake manifold on with this one. We're gonna be testing these coils as they are here to make sure that they are working exactly as we expect them to. We're gonna be testing the injectors out as well, and obviously I've got the idle control valve just so we can actually see this moving up and down when I go to start it and it goes through its cycle over there to make sure that that is working. That means that once I've done that section with the ignition on, I'm gonna to have to cut, we're gonna go, I'm gonna put the manifold back on and also put the normal dumb coils back in here because the manifold doesn't fit with these on and then obviously we'll be able to do the actual running part of the video. So that's just a heads up from the get go just so that you know when obviously I'm gonna cut and then come back again, it's gonna look very, very different and it's much easier to test these coils and injectors directly from the ECU software than it is trying to pull these out as and when she's running because with the inlet manifold coming over the top, it's incredibly difficult, okay? Right, so what are we gonna be testing on the ignition side with the ignition on? We're gonna make sure the check engine light works. So again, that's gonna be the LED on the fuse box and the check engine light on the dash. We're gonna make sure the oil pressure light works. So it should pop up immediately as soon as I put the ignition on. I will unplug the oil pressure switch over there Plug it back in again, you'll see the light will go off and come on again. Then we're gonna test the alternator light. Obviously, I don't have a VW alternator, so I'm just going to ground out the wire. I've then got these little LED or LED attached to the pink with the blue wire on there, so that should light up the second that I do earth out the alternator light. And then what we're gonna do is pop into the software and we're gonna test the injectors and the coils as well. When we come back and obviously we're looking at the part where the engine's actually running, Again, nice and simple, we're just testing the starter circuit, so when I touch the black with the yellow wire, the engine cranks over and starts. The fuel pump, we'll obviously test because the engine will keep running after we then start the vehicle. The tack will come over to the gauge cluster over there, make sure that our tack signal is working correctly. And coolant temp, because again, we have obviously wired up the separate coolant temp there, so we'll make sure that that is working as well. Okay, right, so. That's what we're gonna do there. So first thing we wanna do for now is we obviously wanna turn the ignition on. And when we do that, what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to hold the camera here by the idle speed control valve. So you guys can actually see this valve moving up and down just to make sure that you can see that that's working. What I'm gonna be doing on my side is just connecting this black with a red trace of wire to 12 volts, which comes from the battery. And then obviously then everything will work. So if I'm gonna hold the camera there and then ignition on, there you go, fantastic. So we can see the idle control valve motor works there. Coming back to it, we can see we've got our LED on our fuse box, that's our check engine light, and unsurprisingly there is our check engine light on the dash as well. We've also got the oil pressure light over there. So to test that out, all I'm gonna literally do is unplug the oil pressure switch, and the light is gonna go off. So as I unplug it, there the light goes off. I'm gonna plug it back in again. and there she comes straight back on again. So, happy with the oil pressure switch. We know it's working and the dash will be working in the car for Scott there when he plugs it all in. All right, so let's go back to the other one. So we wanna test now the alternator light. So again, you can see here, I've got absolutely no LEDs on over there. I'm just gonna pop back over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to earth it out. 
and you can see straight away there we've got a live LED and if I let it go there it goes off so that is fantastic super happy with that right so now we're going to move on to the injectors and the ignition before I start I do have a video to show you how to test your outputs on an ECU master ECU uh, the principle for the black and the classic is exactly the same so what we're going to do now is we're going to pop into there we're going to go to tools test outputs and then we're going to do all six injectors and we're going to do all six coils now what I'm going to do is obviously I can actually feel and hear the injectors working you guys will obviously hear it through the camera unfortunately sometimes with the spark it can be incredibly difficult to actually hear the spark but we'll try our best and see if you can do that some of them have the valves open so you can hear it quite loudly some of them don't have the valves open and obviously it's very difficult to hear injectors on the other hand are super easy so again i'm just going to close this down for now you basically go up to the tool section at the top there you go on test outputs it pops down over here and then you can choose the output that you want to test okay so everything from all the auxiliaries all the injectors the stepper motor outputs and the ignition outputs as well so we're going to start on the injector i'm going to hit test you can hear the injector clicking away we're going to go to number two sorry two there you go and then we're going to go to number three And there you go. We're gonna to go to number four. Let's just pop down to number four and test. There you go. Pop over to number five. And there you go. Pop over to number six. And there you go. Alrighty, so now we're gonna pop over to the ignition and we're gonna test. And you probably heard that one that was quite loud. Let's go over to ignition two. That one's very soft, one of the valves must be closed. Ignition three. That's actually quite loud. I think the exhaust valve is open because I can hear it in the exhaust there. Ignition four. Right, there you go. I can hear that. And ignition five, we'll pop into there. And again, I think the exhaust valve is open. I can hear it through the exhaust there. And ignition six. Again, it's very, very quiet. So that must have the valves closed there. So that should make sense if you know the engine cycle and what ones were open and what ones were closed. Right, so that is all the testing of the ignition and the injectors, okay. Right, so, like I said, I'm not doing a very extensive video. I do have videos on how to test your inputs and your outputs. The reason being that I tested the coils and the injectors is obviously I cannot remove the injectors one by one when the inlet manifold comes over the top. And number two, obviously I, at this stage, I can't run the engine with these coils because they don't fit underneath the intake when it goes over the top of it. So I wanted to do those two tests just to show you that they do work. Obviously when we're gonna come back now, or I'm gonna go now, put the intake back on, get it actually up and running, get it up to temperature, and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll be able to see all of the information like the intake air temperature, like the coolant temperature, etc. on the actual ECU software itself. All right, so I'm going to nip off and do that. When I come back, you'll see the engine will look very different. It'll be ready to start and we'll go into actually starting it and seeing it running. So we'll see you in a second. Right, so now we're going to move into the part of the testing that involves actually starting the engine. So as you can see at the moment, I've got the intake back on got the throttle body on now as you are aware or hopefully you should be this is from a 2jzg it's actually drive by wire throttle body in this case we're just using the tps plug and we're wiring it into the tps so we can get that particular reading on the ecu obviously we need that to make sure it works we've got our vacuum hose connected to our ecu so we've got our map sensor reading so that is all good and over here because the 2jzg vbti has the coolant temp sensor underneath the intake I do apologize, I have to open the door for the smoke and fumes that come in here. But yeah, so the CL, the coolant temp sensor is underneath the intake here. So I've got a piece of wire over there going over to there so we can get our coolant temp reading. Uh, what I will do as well as when we do the coolant temp for the actual gauge, I'm gonna swap these wires around so that we can actually see the temperature showing on the dash there as well. So that'll be part of that setup over there. So what we're looking to test is obviously the starter, AKA if we, touch the black with the yellow wire to 12 volts, the engine cranks over and hopefully starts straight up. Fuel pump, 
Again, as long as she keeps running, we know that the fuel pump is working as expected because obviously the ECU is controlling the fuel pump and it'll keep it running while the engine's going. Tack signal, we're going to go over to our gauge over there and we're going to look at the tack signal and make sure that's working. And then as I said, the coolant temp, I'm going to swap those wires around so that we can actually see that the coolant temp on the gauge is working. Now, another thing I'm going to do, looks a bit weird, but it works. I'm going to take that book over there and I'm going to cover the throttle because obviously uh, drive-by-wire throttles don't sit completely closed. They're about 4-5% if I'm not mistaken open. So I'm just going to use the book to quieten it down a bit and stop it from idling at like 1500 RPM. So when you see me do that, don't freak out. It's just my way of controlling the opening of the throttle. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my yep, defenders on. We're going to fire up the ignition and then oh, what we'll also do as well is we will check that the alternator light and everything goes off because what I've done now is I've connected up our standard alternator to the plug. So we should be absolutely fine and this should work exactly as we expect it to as well as charging the battery. Okay, so let's put these on so I don't hurt my ears. Rightio. Okay, so popping over here again, we're just going to put the ignition on. Right, so that's the ignition on. We've got our check engine light on. We've got our oil light on. As soon as we fire it up, you'll see the check engine light will go off and the oil light will go off. Just a note, um, when I disconnect the coolant temp, you'll see the check engine light come on. That's perfectly normal. We have actually registered the ECU to put up a fault or a check engine light if we have an issue with the coolant temp sensor. Okay, so that's why the check engine light comes on. So, nice and easy. What we're going to do is start it up. So again, I'm going to apply 12 volts to the black with the yellow tracer and... Yeah, defenders off. Right, so as you can see, she runs really, really nicely. Obviously, the issue's already been set up for a 1JZ. I just made a couple of changes, like the coils and obviously the size of the injectors, uh, just to make her run as nicely as she does. But yeah, turns uh, starts really nicely. Everything's working exactly as we expected to. So what we're going to do now, Scott, is obviously we're going to get this off, get it over to you guys, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of the sunshine because it's hardly ever sunny in England. So that's what I'm going to go do now. And again, guys, thanks for watching. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, you can comment down below in the video. I try and get to those as, as much as I possibly can. You can also find out us on Facebook at Phoenix Engine Management. And again, it's I'll try and get back to you guys as quickly as I humanly possibly can. But again... Thanks for watching. Scott will get this to you. I know you've got a busy week next week to get this all fitted up. But again, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you again soon.
never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane.